Hey, it's me. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. And remember to like and subscribe. Okay, excuse me. Right, yeah, I thought I'll talk a little bit about how to witness to people, how to preach to people. Now, the first thing you've got to realise is that um, pretty much throughout the whole of Europe, you know, and especially the UK, the UK is a deeply, deeply secular country, right? Uh, the vast majority of people don't want to know about God, and then there's those people who do believe in a higher power, they, they do believe in God, but they don't want to know about Jesus or anything, okay? It's always the J word. People don't like to be held accountable or made to feel that they're sinners or that some guy, or should I say God, had to come down from the third heaven. Uh, God had to come into the flesh in order to die for the whole of mankind's sins and all of our wretchedness, all of our hypocrisy, all of our lust, everything that we're guilty of. Whatever it may be, blasphemy, it could be anything. Okay. And, um, so yeah, it's become harder than ever before to preach or to witness to people. Now, before I go any further, I'd just like to say, if you are thinking of witnessing to anyone, it could be someone at work, it could be someone at college, it could be a friend, a family member, it could be someone at university, it could be someone... In a shop somewhere, it could literally be anyone, anywhere, at any place, at any time. Okay, the first thing is to not take yourself too seriously. Okay, because the more seriously you take yourself, the bigger your ego is, the more self-important you are. If 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 the whole situation explodes and goes out of hand and you start arguing or whatever, then that's no good, and you're more likely to lose your temper. Uh, you're more likely to get on somebody's bad side, and someone's more likely to think that you're full of it, you know, that you're smog, that, that, that you know better than them. You see, once you get that into into that kind of situation, you just back away. That's why I said you should never take yourself too seriously. The less seriously you take yourself, the better, because then if someone uh, blows you off or swears at you or or insults your intelligence or ridicules you, then you're less likely to, to, to take offence. Just see yourself as a mouthpiece for God. You know, it, 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 it's that sort of, um, the sort of mentality and attitude you should have is that you're a mouthpiece for God, but you're just the messenger. You're not God. So don't take offence if somebody... I know it's easier said than done, but don't take offence. Now, believe me, I've been there, OK? Uh, whilst I was at college, I went to college for several years... Or should I say a good few years, actually, I was at college. And uh, every now and again, I tried to witness to people. Now, I didn't do this every day. It was just with, let's say, maybe five to six people together. I can't remember how many people I did this with. But I did try to preach, and I did try to witness to a few people, okay? And predictably, I had mixed results. Now, it's one thing talking in hypotheticals and knowing how to preach but I think I better speak from my own personal experience I think that's for the best because I could keep waffling on about this that and the other but I will say this I really do admire street preachers because they get a lot of flack they get swore out you know some of them even get beaten up this world there's never been a time in history on this whole planet when we're talking about Jesus the Lord and Saviour and mankind and preaching the word and all, and all that stuff uh, has become harder than ever before. There's never been a time where, where, where it's been more hostile. That's what I meant to say. It's very, very hostile to be a Christian in this day and age. And, and now, not everyone's like that. Some people are polite, respectful, uh, and, 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 and and they'll listen to you. They won't necessarily take it in all that much or even remember what you've said all the time or even agree with you or become saved just because they've... Uh, listen to but some people are naturally more receptive and naturally more respectful than others and then you get the hostile types you get the atheists you get the agnostics now from my personal experience an awful awful lot of atheists are actually agnostics agnostics who don't want to know about god they don't want to know about religion and they sort of associate uh god with with religion and because we're associating religion with god okay <laughs> 
they sort of got they sort of become embittered somehow. It's like they've lowered God to the level of a man-made religion. I mean, I I'm no fan of religion myself. Believe me, I'm not. Okay. In fact, I haven't even attended church for the past few years. If you want to know the honest to goodness truth, I haven't. Okay, and that, that is honest to goodness truth. Now you might may think that's a bit odd. Oh, uh, why hasn't he been to church then if he's a Christian? Look, I've got my own personal reasons. I'm not going into that in this video. That I've gone a little bit off topic. I was going to say, I was going to talk about my experiences witnessing to people at church. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, there was one chap I spoke to at church. And yeah, I was talking about God, this, that and the other. And then he turned around to me and said, well, okay, if God's everywhere at once, then... Um, what did he say? If God's everywhere at once, he said, then wouldn't that make him a pedo? Well, that, that's actually what he said to me. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't that make it as, as if say he could see everything? As if say he could see everybody naked in the showers, in the baths? You know, it's absolutely ridiculous, man. And that's what he said to me. The, 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 this young guy, I think he was in his early twenties. And I didn't know what to say. You know, if you're talking to someone like that, then... <laughs> We're talking about God. He's created everything. Everything. <laughs> you don't get anything from nothing. Life is far too complicated to have arisen from, from, from nothing and to have created itself, whether it's through millions of years of evolution or not. Okay? <laughs> it's as simple as that. And this guy turned around and said, oh, if God's everywhere at once, don't, 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 don't that make him a pedo? Anyway, you're going to find people like that. But sometimes, even when you talk to people and they seem to sort of not take it in, sometimes just the fact that you stood there and tried and attempted to talk to them about Jesus, that, that, those kind of experiences tend to stick a long time in the memory. So don't think it's always a waste of time, but it isn't. But I will say this, is that if, if you come across someone... And you start talking to them about God, the Bible, about Jesus, that kind of thing. But they don't want to know, they don't want to listen to you. Then just walk away. Okay, because it's not worth it. If they don't want to know, then don't, don't, don't fall into the trap of arguing with people who have no intention of listening to you. And that, unfortunately, describes the vast majority of people, at least from my personal experience in, in the United Kingdom, right? And, uh, yeah. And sometimes... You've got to talk to people at their level. If you start talking about topics, it could be about dinosaurs, it could be about aliens, Zeus or Cronus, the f who came before him. Um, it could be about anything or anything. It could be about crop circles, whatever. If you start talking about stuff that you think is relevant to the world as a whole, and yes it is, because a lot of a phenomena that's going on today is related to what's written in the Bible. It is related to the fallen ones, to the Nephilim and all that stuff. But not everyone's going to see it like that. You've got to start from the basics. You've got to say, well, okay, do you think you're a good person? Really? Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever lied? Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? You know, you've got to, got to recite the Ten Commandments. And uh, this won't work with everyone because a lot of people, if they think the Old Testament and the New Testament is just man-made uh, religion, then they're not going to take you seriously because they're going to think, well, okay, if it's just man who's written this thing and it's not inspired by God, then why should I pay any attention to it? It's as simple as that, okay? But nonetheless, use the Ten Commandments to... Um, Make people aware of their wrongdoing. Okay, you can even have a bit of a laugh about it. I mean, sometimes when you ask people, oh, um, have you ever stolen anything? They might, they, they might uh, chuckle a bit. They might have a little bit of, a bit of a laugh with you. They might say, oh, well, I stole a pencil sharpener when I was in school. You know, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. And from there, you can start to talk about Jesus, how he came and died on the cross, and he set the ultimate example for all of us, because we're all failures. The only difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is that a Christian realises that they need Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, whilst an unbeliever doesn't. And I've said this in previous videos, there's plenty of unbelievers, atheists and agnostics, and people that belong to different religions and faiths, that actually live better lives and have better hearts and minds 
and are better people in terms of their conduct than a lot of so-called Christians are, okay? And that's just a fact. So uh, don't go judging people or anything or being haughty. And God is a saviour of all kinds of people, man. He knows how to save. He knows those who belong to him and those who don't. Those who he can't do anything with and those who he can. Okay, he knows the difference. So don't get too stressed. Realise that God is in, in charge and realise that we are living in a, in a world of spiritual warfare. There is a first heaven, the physical realm, the spirit realm, the second heaven. Uh, and then there's the third heaven. And there's an awful lot of battling going on. And you best believe that throughout World War One and World War Two, I mean, they're, they're two of the most obvious examples I can think of right now off the top of my head, of spiritual warfare. If that's not spiritual warfare, I don't know what is, man. But I'm not going to get into that. I might do a separate video in the future about World War One and World War Two and how, how that relates to Satan and the second heaven and spiritual warfare. But I'm just mentioning this to give you an idea about preaching and about witnessing to people. It's happening all the time. You don't know who you're going to talk to, what they've been through in their lives. You don't know what financial problems they have. So if you experience hostility, and um, and people thinking you're full of it, people insulting your intelligence, people not being respectful to you, then just walk away and sidestep the situation. Just say, okay, if that's how you feel, then fair enough. You don't have to listen to me. You know, you, you know, you, you know, there's a lot of anger out there. You see, sometimes with these people, when they start back chatting you and everything, or they're getting angry. Obviously, this doesn't always happen, but when it does. A lot of the time it's because of personal issues, it's personal problems, it could be that they're disappointed in life, they're angry with God. You find a lot of people, it's not like there's so much that they don't believe in God, because in fact, it's it's a well-documented fact that polls have been carried out and surveys have been carried out globally, right? Okay, And it's been discovered that the vast, vast majority of people do believe in a creator. It might not be the creator of the Bible, but they do believe in some kind of higher power. Some people believe in more than one God, but the vast majority of people do believe in, in God because it's innate in all of us to believe in God. Just like we've all been given the, the ability, the basic ability of understanding to know the difference between right from wrong. It's because God gave us the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. The only difference is that his understanding of the difference between right from wrong and ours uh, it's different because we're imperfect and he's perfect. That, 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 that's the difference. So we can judge and say, okay, uh, what, what, what that person did or said is wrong and what that person said and did was right. But God sees the overall picture. He sees everything. So we mustn't rely on this world's understanding of the difference between right from wrong. And this ties in very, very nicely with preaching and witnessing to people because you're talking to people and trying to witness to people and I mean, I hate to use this word, but they've been kind of brainwashed. They've been conditioned by this world's standards of the difference between right from wrong, man. And it's true because this world, and, 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 and when we are living in a world of political correctness, where we're in politics, the members of parliament, the prime minister, whatever pleases the masses, they're going to go along with it, okay? Because they don't want riots breaking out in the street, and that's true. Now, now, I'm not going to talk about politics in this video, but I thought I'll touch upon it just a little bit. Again, all this ties in with witnessing to people and preaching to people. You've got to bear in mind that we're all individuals, we're all unique. And we've been born into an imperfect world. So have you, and so have they, those people who you're witnessing to and preaching to. Just remember that. And just realise that we're all human, man. I mean, that person that you're arguing with, the day after, you could get run over by a bus and killed. You know, <laughs> I don't mean to sound fatalistic or anything, but that's the sort of world we're living in. None of us know how much longer we've got. We shouldn't take ourselves too seriously and remember the Ten Commandments to uh, to make people aware of their sin and their wrongdoing and then bring Jesus into it, how he walked into that courtroom, so to speak, I died on the cross to pay your fine so that you can walk away a free man or woman. That's how you've got to talk to these people. It's like when you've got a load of parking fines. There's all, uh, you know, the judge, which is the father, or should I say Jesus, says, well, 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 you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong, you've done that wrong. But you know what? Because you believe in me, 
and I died in your place, you can walk out of this courtroom a free man or woman. Now, isn't that great news? Now, you think that people would love to hear that, wouldn't you? But unfortunately, we're living in a world where people are proud. People have got their own presuppositions. People have got their own different gods that, that they may believe in or different religions or faiths. Most typically, I mean, I find that the vast majority of people in the UK and throughout Europe these days tend to be either atheist or agnostic. They usually describe themselves as being one of those two. You've got to be respectful because you've got to understand something that how did they get to be an atheist? How did they get to be an agnostic? Was it because of scientific reasoning? Was it because of their education, their upbringing? Or it's just them. Or perhaps they're not ready for God yet. Or perhaps they'll never believe in God. Look, you've got to accept it. Everyone's different. You've got to live and let live. Don't take yourself too seriously. And don't get into arguments with people. Remember that video I did called The Futility of Arguments? Arguments almost never lead anywhere good. There are constructive arguments that lead to something really, really great. There's some fantastic arguments out there that actually... Uh, help people respect each other more and respecting each other's point of view and learning from one another. That can be a beautiful thing. But when you're going out there preaching, you've got to stay calm, level-headed, and you've got to have a thick skin. If you don't have a thick skin, if you've got a short fuse, or, or if you go to anger management classes, then I would not recommend becoming a street preacher or even witnessing to anyone in the workplace or anywhere else because you're going to end up in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah. I mean, take this video that I'm doing right now, for example. I mean, I'm going to... Uh, allow comments. Now, on the vast majority of my videos, I don't actually allow comments, but I'm going to allow it on this one. Now, I don't doubt that at some point in the future, even if it takes two, three years, a few years from now, or whatever, or maybe within the next a few minutes after I upload the video, I might get a nasty comment or something, but I'm going to have to live with it, okay? But um, that's, that's life. We've got to take the hits in life. We've got to take the rough with the smooth. We're all going to die one day, whether we're atheists or Christians. It's as simple as that, whether, whether we're people who are saved or not saved. We're all going to die. We're all going to be judged by God. So so just look at it from that perspective. Try to see the big picture. Don't, don't get uh, embroiled and entangled in worldly arguments and trying to prove that you know better than somebody else or, or anything like that. Anyway, in terms of what I did at college, yeah, there was that example that I gave you. And then there was another time when I was ganged up on by a load of young guys. I was trying to talk about Jesus and about the Bible. And they had no real intention of uh, listening to me. In fact, it gotten so bad that the teaching assistant that was on that course came along and actually separated us because they all ganged up around me. They weren't, they weren't getting violent or anything. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, it was just that they were sort of ridiculing me, they were insulting my intelligence, and basically what they were saying was this, they were saying, why should I trust what you're saying, why should I believe you, why should I believe that the Bible is the written word of God, you see, the people are asking, they want answers, you've got to be ready to give the answers, and I was giving them the answers, the best I could, I even mentioned uh, about all of the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, now this is a very important point, don't forget the prophecies that he fulfilled and think about the, the statistical impossibility of anyone carrying them all out. Because the Old Testament is full of prophecies, okay, which were, which were fulfilled in the New Testament. And Jesus did them, many of them. I forget how many now, but it's a lot, okay. And it's virtually impossible unless it was God, which obviously he is. He was God in the flesh. He is God in the flesh, okay. But, uh, but, but but bring up things like that, how he fulfilled all those prophecies from the Old Testament, Jesus, you know. Anyway, um, I don't want to make this video drag on too long, but uh, not everyone's cut out to preach or to witness to people. But you've got to do, you've got to do everything with love. You've got to be calm, even tempered. Very, very calm. It's very hard. And although I may have put a lot of emphasis on people's hostility towards Christianity and about Jesus and about the Bible, you know, but it's true. I'm just speaking from my own experience, man. And that's it's the truth. People are hostile. But the, the, the UK, 
I don't know if it's the most secular country in Europe, but it certainly is. Now, in other parts of the world, your experience may be completely different. Let's say the experience of witnessing to people and preaching to people in the UK will be completely different from preaching and witnessing to people in the United States of America, or in Africa, or in China, or Japan. You know, it depends where you are, okay? So, 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 so just remember that. And it might even pay to learn the customs and the uh, and obviously the language of the people uh, that, that you're preaching and witnessing to, okay? And just remember not to be too lofty. You yourself may have done research about things and know about stuff that isn't mainstream knowledge. If that's the case, then just stick to the basics. Don't start waffling on about this, that and the other, because you've got to get the basic message through. You've got to have a good, solid foundation when you're preaching to people and, and, and when you're witnessing to people. You've always got to, you've got to train yourself to have the answers, okay? And the answers are in the Bible. And you certainly don't get through to anyone or get anyone saved. Not, not, not that we can save anyone, mind you. That's God, okay? Obviously, if we're preaching to someone and they're listening to us, and they take it on board and realise that they need Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, God will swoop in with his Holy Spirit and save that person there and then. It does happen like that sometimes. But the fact of the matter is, is that we ourselves can't save anyone, only God can. And you don't save anyone by whacking anyone over the head of this thing, okay? I don't mean that literally, I just mean don't be, uh, don't be um, what did you call them? These people that force... God down people's throats. Don't do that. You've got to live and let live. And don't get angry. Don't get worked up. And, um, yeah. If people don't want to know, they don't want to know. It's as simple as that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. And I'm going to finish off the rest of this coffee. In fact, I might just warm it up in the night because it's pretty lukewarm by now. So, yeah, hopefully I didn't go too far off topic. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. And if you've got any experiences witnessing to people or preaching to people, both the good and the bad experiences, or if you've got any advice or guidance about this yourself, then feel free to mention uh, things. Perhaps you think that passing out leaflets in the street is a better way of doing it, or perhaps being more selective with who you actually preach to and, and, and witness to. Perhaps you've got a story about a family member that, that you've witnessed to, or perhaps... Um, Perhaps you've got a success story or something. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye.